So guys, 992 series of 911 has been, to put it simply, pretty incredible. And we've reviewed every single one on RBR. I've had my personal favorites as we've gone through the series, but truth be told, every single model had its own charm. But we've been missing one that perhaps over recent generations has been the most popular or even the sweet spot. And that is the GTS. And it's such a sweet spot that it's now transcended the 911 lineup through the years into every single other Porsche as well because the GTS has always somehow managed to be the sportiest version of each model while maintaining that key factor of daily usability. And today the 992 promises to do that and more, bringing so much more from turbo into the 992 generation of GTS. It could prove to be the best GTS that we've ever had. Today we will be testing a really exciting looking one here in Lava Orange with the lightweight package as well. Got loads to show you guys. Of course, we're gonna go on a drive as well. So let's dive straight in. So guys, quick reminder of 992 series. I wanna talk a little bit about each model that we've had so far. And I think the one that we need to start with is out of the standard cars, probably my favorite, and that is the base standard 992 with no options. We reviewed this recently. It was an absolute hit with you guys. I love the car to pieces. Yes, it doesn't have as much power as your typical Carrera S or 4S, which are the popular options, but I found it in terms of daily usability, having fun with a sports car. It was so close to the S and the 4S that the car just made me smile every time I drove it. And of course, at that price point, an absolute killer. Of course, then the first one that we ever drove was the Carrera S. That matched with the 4S that we tested as well. We found it to be incredibly fast and just such a good daily. In fact, it was so fast that I thought a turbo just isn't necessary. That was until I drove the turbo and oh my God, it blew my mind in every scenario, whether it's using the car daily or getting full usage of that incredible horsepower on track or more open roads. Yes, undoubtedly too fast for the road, but I enjoyed that car so much. I put my own money where my mouth was and I actually bought one. So the turbo, an absolute hit. And then you have the ones more suited to daily usability and great weather like we have here in Italy today that is like our Cabriolet and our Targas. Again, the Targa, such a huge hit with you guys and myself as well. So the 992 series was really shaping up well and then came the king of them all, the GT3 and the GT3 Touring. Drove them, absolutely fell in love with the Touring and the GT3 now more usable than it ever has been before while being even more dynamic on track thanks to the double wishbone front suspension and maintaining that wonderful sound of the naturally aspirated engine. Now, of course, what was missing? GTS, and that's what we have today. Now, I have my reservations about this car because GTS has always been that much more exciting than Carrera S and 4S. And with our current 992 generation with OPF restrictions, etc., etc., I don't know how we'll get that extra emotion, say, from the exhaust. I don't know, considering how brilliant the Carrera S is, whether Porsche will be able to get more dynamically out of what essentially looks like a Carrera S with sports design package, but they've threatened to do so, and it would be folly of us to doubt them. Now, the first ever GTS came with the 904 series Carrera GTS, and since then, we've had a continuous tradition of using the GTS name, like I said, for a car that was more performance orientated than your S or 4S, and provided that much more emotion for the more serious Porsche driver. No better example than the 991 and the 991.2 GTS. So characterful, so much great noise, so good dynamically, and inside giving a lot of that racing flavor that a Porsche customer really wants. Today's 992 GTS, much of the same, but taking that same idea even further outside and inside and I wanna show you every bit of it. Before we do that, a quick talk technically what's changed because this is really important. Though the outside of the car looks very similar to Carrera S and 4S, there have been a ton of changes under the skin to make this the GTS version. First and most importantly is the chassis, which is actually derived 
from our 911 Turbo. So our coupe and cab get the 10 mil drop, they get the PASM Sport suspension. As we mentioned in Turbo as well, the GTS is also fitted with the helper springs that allow better length of travel for the springs, keeping better road contact for the GTS, matching its bigger brother. Our engine is of course the flat six turbo engine that was so brilliant in every single 992 that we've tried. Here, it's been massaged further. We've got 480 PS, which is an increase of 30 over the last car, 570 Newton meters as well. And in this car, our Carrera 4 GTS, the zero to 60 is 3.3 seconds, which is damn impressive. You also have a plethora of models to choose from when it comes to GTS, five in total, in fact, you've got your coupe and cabriolet which both come in either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive gts and then you've got your targo as well available as an all wheel drive car so plenty of choice for the porsche enthusiast but there are many changes to look at as well inside and out and i'm going to show you everything right now so let's have a quick walk around the car okay guys here we go this is your 992 gts i decided to pick the one that i thought was the most interesting in its color and spec and that is our lava orange GTS that you see here, in fact, with the lightweight package, which adds a bit of aerodynamic efficiency under the front end, which we can't see here. And more importantly, saves 25 kg with the seats I'm gonna show you. First, I wanna show you what makes GTS unique versus the standard car, which is essentially our sports design package that you can see firstly here on the front. So there's a lot of gloss black highlights that make the GTS slightly unique. The idea is not to make it massively different to Carrera S, that's not the point of this car. So you can see you've got our black accent here. We've got our lower lip in gloss black as well. That entire lower bumper is our sports design package one. So the idea is a bit more stealthy, a bit more sportive than your standard Carrera S, but not to the levels of say something like Turbo S. What does give it away immediately, as always with GTS though, are the Turbo S center locking wheels, which look pretty fantastic. Wasn't that convinced when I saw them in photos, in person actually looking really menacing. I love this. I mean, it's just car porn. Center locks on Porsches. Absolutely love them. See our carbon ceramics back there, finished with black brake calipers looking rather menacing as well. Of course, got the GTS badge here on the side, which I think suits the car. You need a little bit of livery on GTS versus standard Carrera, which is why I think actually the black protection on the rear wheel arch works really well for GTS. So that to me looks really, really good. I would do that. In fact, I did do it when I spec'd a car. Now, as we come around the rear again, you can see more use of black plastic, gloss black as well. This is all sports design. Again, nothing that unique to GTS. So you can get a similar look without the gloss black on your Carrera S, but GTS isn't about shouting to the world that you've got a super special Porsche. It's if you know, then you know, and this does give that effect. Now I promise I'm gonna let you hear this in a minute. They do say that the sports exhaust system a bit unique on the GTS. I will be the judge of that because sound, very important to me. How nice is the 992? I'm just absolutely in love with this body. I know you can only get wide body now, and that does annoy some people and I totally get it, a narrow 911 is lovely, but equally, a fat rear 911 is absolutely gorgeous as well. I'd love to know what you guys think. Again, in the photos, I didn't think it looked all that, but seeing it here in person, much more impressed with the overall look of the GTS. Now, I think we should head inside because you're really gonna appreciate the lightweight package once you see the interior of the car. Look at that. You've got your 918 bucket seats, as now seen in our GT3 and Touring as well. There's some other changes inside, and I'm gonna show you those now. Right guys, now you join us inside our second car, which is the Python Green GTS. The reason I chose this, because this is the rear wheel drive variant, which for me, GTS, it's all about getting driver purity, and for me, rear wheel drive is the best. Now let's have a look at this lightweight package interior. Actually before that, we're back at the Porsche Center, the new experience center here, and I did some shopping, as car nuts do. I've got some cool stuff we're gonna show you guys. This is, this is just the best. Jamie, can you show this to the camera? So this is a Porsche locking wheel nut bottle opener. 
and it's got some heft to it. It is probably the coolest thing I've bought in recent months. Very, very nice. And then I've got something else as well. Check this out. 911 shaped ice cube holder. Just, just brilliant. I love it. Anyway, I digress massively. Back to GTS. This is of course, this is of course lightweight package interior. You can tell that from the lovely 918 bucket seats that you would see, for example, in the GT3 these days. We also don't have the rear seats as I showed you. That's not all that goes on with lightweight package. You also get lighter glass on the front, on the sides, on the rear, and we get a lighter starter battery as well. You get different aero slats underneath the front of the car as well, all optimized for lightweight package. In fact, even our rear spoiler has different optimization for this package as well. And altogether reduces the weight 25 kg. So if you're serious about making this kind of a GT3 light, this is something you really need to get, probably alongside something like the carbon ceramic brakes. But in terms of GTS look within the inside of 992, there's also quite a lot that gives it away immediately without even seeing the badge on the software. For example, you've got your race tax at the bottom of our console here, which is a dead giveaway. Race tech steering wheel as well, and the lovely small GT Sport steering wheel. Race tech's used pretty much everywhere where you touch the car because it's great for tactile feeling. It's great for, I find it great for responsiveness on steering wheels. So that's nice. It's within the middle of our bucket seat as well. But again, nothing too flashy, just the right amount that you know that this is GTS or a more focused 911. So I really like that. Of course, you've got the GTS logo within our lovely analog dial in the middle and within the software as well. Now, one thing that's changed with 911 this year, and this is all of 911, is having the new PCM6 system. So this has changed. It looks familiar to what you're used to, but it's changed some of the usability to be a bit more natural. For example, on our home screen here, I can simply drag and drop anything I want into even our left menu that stays where it is. And it allows you to customize the PCM system to your own liking. Indeed, we've also got Apple Music and Apple Podcasts as part of the system. So you don't need a phone to do any of that. It's actually now within your Porsche. So that's quite cool. So this is a bit of an upgrade. If you're getting a GTS, it'll come with the new PCM system. But GTS, all about emotion. So we need to turn it on. We need to see what this sounds like. Apparently you've got a different type of exhaust system on this. Of course, within this car, when we're driving, there's less sound insulation in the lightweight package as well. So it should sound pretty good. Let's turn it on and see what this exhaust is like. So I'm gonna be honest with you, that sounds pretty similar to Carrera S, but I've already driven Targa before this and I know how good that sounds. So I've got a lot of hopes for this. Let's take it out and really see what the GTS is like with lightweight package in this lovely Python green coupe. So guys, welcome to GTS with lightweight package. Listen to that. Some beautiful roads here in Italy and I'm short on time as always on press trips but we've got lots to talk about because this is actually a very exciting car. It almost feels GT3 light with the lightweight package. The removal of the sound insulation, first of all. The amount of the exhaust noise that we're getting inside the cabin is very GT-like. And that element kind of connects you even more to the road. And of course, it's all the motion that GTS is about. My first worry going into this car, you know, is it gonna sound different enough to Carrera S, Turbo S in fact as well, because GTS generally sound a bit more fruity. And the happy answer is, absolutely it does. Definitely a lightweight package, though I'm gonna have to test it again without lightweight package and see just how much it is in coupe. The yeah, sound is, listen to that near red line, sounds fantastic. So that's a definite big tick box. In terms of steering, it's, it's very, very similar to GT3. It's eagerness to turn in. And I think that's kind of what you're kind of hoping for when you come into something like GTS. You want some of that GT flavor in a more daily usable car. Now, 
lightweight package isn't really that, is it? Because we haven't got any rear seats. You've got the buckets here as well. But this is really that car for someone who wants a GT3, but it's a little bit more daily. The car feels much more raw than Carrera S, more raw than Turbo S as well. We're lucky we've got horrible roads in Italy, just like the UK. So we can kind of judge what it would be like there as well. And it feels a more raw car. Still definitely daily usable, but not as comfortable as Carrera S is. So if you're thinking you're gonna drive this and drive a Carrera S and they're very similar, get that thought out of your head. Same with the steering. This is so much more direct. Of course, our chassis is shared with Turbo, so we've got you know, more rigidity. The helper springs on the rear as well, helping with spring travel. Again, helping with our rigidity as well, keeping tire contact. All of it working, making this feel more rigid than our Carrera S. I mean, I know that the standard 911 or all 911s are wide bodied now, but this car really does shrink around you when you're driving it quickly. Even in these extremely tight Italian roads, it's just impressive. I'd love to know if you've got some more exciting Pirelli Corsa tires on this, would it be even closer to GT3? If you want something that's sweeter handling than turbo, then this is the car for you. Sounds so good. Sounds like a motorsport car. Sounds like, I mean, literally the engine. I've not heard like a standard 911 I'd give you that kind of sound before. And that was very quick as well. Speed is just incredible, as is the sound. The two things pair together make it seem you're going so much faster. Remember though that this is rear wheel drive, so. It doesn't feel anywhere near maniacally fast like Turbo does, but still for a real drive sports car, this is quick. In this, I do feel the extra horsepower, whether that's the extra sound I'm getting, I don't know, but it feels just a lot quicker than Carrera S. Just driving around normally, the thing I love about this is it's so theatrical. I'm going to pin a lot of that down to the lightweight package because you hear so much of what's going on with the engine that you can be doing low speeds like we are now, getting some really nice emotional sound out of the car, which is nice for like a daily Porsche, isn't it? So that element by itself, if you're buying GTS and you want it to be special, this provides all of that, doesn't it? It's exactly what you're looking for. So guys, 992 GTS with lightweight package is a seriously exciting car. And it's more on the side of exciting, it's more on the side of track car, it's more on the side of GT3, less on the side of the traditional GTS, which is a bit more of a daily vehicle. It's still great, but this is for that person who wants a really, really special GTS that kind of reminds them of a GT car. For the rest of us, I suspect that a standard spec GTS is the one to get. I can't wait to try that. I'm gonna try my best to get that next on the channel. We have got Targa GTS coming up next, which is really interesting for those of you who want a daily one. Check that out, it's coming up next on RBR. So guys, if you've enjoyed this, please do like, and most of all, subscribe to RBR. Sadly, we gotta go straight to the airport, just haven't had enough time to enjoy this thing, but it'll be back on the channel soon. So thanks for watching, subscribe to RBR, and I'll see you back on the channel with the GTS very soon.